Time to put on the nasty work shoes. So you know what that means, boys. That means we're about to go to work. Yep. All right, so if you're new to the channel, this is my 2001 S2000 that I bought with a blown motor, which is right there. Um, so I've done basically everything to this car. I did the motor swap, but most recently uh, I had to drop the rear subframe to drop the gas tank to get that cleaned because this car sat for about three to four years. So I had to get the gas tank cleaned, I had to clean the fuel lines, and then uh, get the injectors cleaned as well. And now since that is all done, I'm buttoning everything up, but the differential that I bought with the car actually has a broken mount. I'll show you that. I don't know if this is called the mount, but that part right there, this is not good, not good. So I have a new differential right there with about 55,000 miles on it. So I am throwing that diff in the car, but I've had to wait on um, differential mounts because I'm replacing the diff mounts and I, it's something to do with Corona or COVID or something, but diff mounts are just impossible to get. And I found one set of spoon diff mounts that I was able to get. Uh, they should be here today. And if you know anything about spoon stuff, that's hard to come by in the state. So I was able to get it, but everything else has poor, um, all the other diff mounts are out of stock or like a three to four week back order. So I have those coming. I also have these guys. These are axle spacers. The reason I'm running axle spacers is because I'm lowered and when you lower the car, the knuckle in the boot of the axle, uh, the angle changes, something happens and it wears out the internal piece of that knuckle. So if you add spacers that kind of readjust the angle back to where it should be. So I'm going to throw those in too, but for right now what I have to do is this diff doesn't have any of this, doesn't have the studs in it or the mounts. Um, so I'm going to take the studs and the mounts off of that diff and throw them on this one. And then hopefully the spoon mounts show up within the next few hours because I would love to knock this project out today. I still have to go get gas and put gas in the gas tank because that's completely empty. But once I get the diff switched over, the diff mounts mounted, the axles and axle spacers installed, I can then reinstall the EVAP system, which knock on wood, hopefully isn't too hard to do. Then I have to go get gas, fill up the gas tank, and hopefully she runs like a champ. We got a laundry list of things to do. Let's knock this out, boys. All right, boys, so new diff is ready to go. You know, I went to try and find um, a replacement bolt and replacement nuts because the uh, last guy uh, that I took the diff that came off the car, they didn't use factory stuff. Couldn't find any. Um, it's not that big a deal because both of those I can replace when they're in the car. So it's not that big a deal. So if I want to go get factory nuts and one factory bolt, I can do that. Uh, but best timing ever. Spoon mounts just showed up. So now I'm going to replace the factory mounts up there. And the other ones are already off. Those will go right here, I believe. And uh, then we'll be able to put the diff back in.
least it's a nice day. Man, major, major, major bogey. So, up to this point, I've done all the work to get to where I need to install the axles. I put the, uh, put the new mounts in for the diff, installed the diff, swapped all the parts onto the diff that need to go onto the new diff, put the diff in the car, got to the point where I need to do axles, and I put the passenger side axle in, just fine. Kind of a pain in the butt, but just fine. Put the passenger side axle in, put the spacer in, everything was good. Thought, I'm gonna knock this out, this is going great. So then I moved over to the driver's side. Driver's side wasn't going in, it was too long. I'm like, crap. I put the passenger side in, or I put the driver's side axle in the passenger side. So I'll go undo it, undo all the passenger side axle stuff, take it out, bring it over to the driver's side, try and put it in, and that one doesn't work either. Ugh. Huge bummer. Let me show you what happened. So, these are the axles that came off the car. Notice the diameter difference. This is an OEM axle. This, this one, and that one, which, too long, are ones that the owner had in storage. He had them in storage, and uh, his son had it put these ones in. These are, like, cheap knockoff ones but he gave me these ones and I didn't look to see if they match I saw they matched these these two matched and I thought okay so they're good I didn't think that the driver or that s2000 axles were different sizes so I have two passenger side axles and now I have to wait and find a driver side axle Oh, that's just the last thing I wanted. I'm so bummed out right now because I was making great progress and I would have been able to knock this out today. Oh, uh, well, if this video is delayed, you know why. Gosh, that bums me out. Oh, well. Oh, well. It happens. It happens. <laughs> And a week later, we got our axle. Gosh. Again, I am, uh, I'm so just, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed in myself for not checking this before and then having to wait a week. I mean, it's been a week since I last filmed this. Last Friday was when I started, and it's now the next Friday. So anyway, got the new axle. I can finish up installing this diff. I forgot where I left off. Everything with the fuel in should be done. I haven't checked it for anything. I need to go get fuel to put in the car. Um, but I mean, I've been waiting on this axle. So now that we have the axle, I can wrap up everything up. So enough talking. I forgot where I left off. Anyway, let's get to installing this thing. Well, this entire time I thought it was recording and it wasn't. <laughs> Good job, me. <laughs> oh well. All right. So, what has happened? Uh, installed the axles with the spacers. Installed the axles with the spacers. Um, got the castle nut torqued on uh, to the lower ball joint, so that's good on both sides. Uh, got the prop shaft torqued on to the diff so that's good made i went through and made sure all the diff mounts were torqued to spec uh, so that's these ones back here and then those ones to make sure those are torqued and then made sure that was torqued as well so that's all good um, then i just went through and torqued the big 32 millimeter nut uh, at the end of the axle uh, facing this way 
on both sides. So that's done and I think now it's time to tackle this EVAP system and this is kind of the last thing I have to do and one of the things I've been worried about the most because I'm sure it looks worse than it is but it's just it looks like a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah I'm gonna figure that out now. <laughs> Alright let's do it. Alright boys it has come time to install the Mugen exhaust. I love this thing. But for any of my boys that work on their car by themselves, you will know installing an exhaust on your own is a gigantic pain in the butt. So prepare to be entertained while I show you how I do it. <laughs> All right, boys, it's the next day. And you know, I pretty much knocked most of this out yesterday. So I'm gonna quickly go over everything I got done. So you can see Mugen exhaust installed. It looks so good. I love this exhaust. I haven't even heard it yet and I love it. So exhaust is installed. Um, as for underneath, everything's pretty much done. Um, got the axle nuts torqued on there. Everything for the diff has been torqued. Uh, the cross member has been installed. Um, I took out the cat and put in a um, high flow. We're gonna call it a high flow cat for now. So that is good. Um, the rear mounts are good, or the diff mounts are good. The spacers are good. Uh, I will have to bleed the brakes because I did disconnect them right there. So I'm going to uh, just do a rear brake bleed. That should, be, that should be fine. They feel fine as is already. I just want to get any air out of there. So all I'm going to do right now is literally just go over everything one more time underneath the car. Um, to just make sure everything's tight. Just make sure everything looks good, everything's tight. Go over every nut and bolt one more time. Just to double, triple check. Um, cause I did all of this and remember I did do a fuel pump, fuel housing, fuel basket, whatever it is, um, all that stuff, clean the injectors, clean the fuel lines. So this is kind of a big update, a big fix. I did a lot of stuff in this one, or I've done a lot of stuff up until this point. So there's a lot of things that I want to look over. Like, I don't think I really filmed it, but, uh, I read, I put new injectors in. Uh, I had these injectors, new gas or new seals on them, new O-rings. Um, so this has all been taken apart. So, you know, I want to, uh, once it's ready, I'm not going to start it right away. I'm going to make sure there are no leaks, anything like that. So anyway, I'm just going to go over it again, ensure everything looks good. Then before I lower it or do anything like that, what I'll probably do is put the fuel pump fuse back in and just see if there are any fuel leaks at all. So anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna go under there, check under the car, make sure everything looks good and we'll go from there. All right, boys, so it is about time to stick the fuel pump fuse back in. I poured all the gas that I bought. I uh, got a jug of a can of gas and threw it in there, five gallons. Um, so right now what I have is a fuel pump for the fuse is still out. I'm gonna throw that back in, super easy. But then I have this little cap off just to make sure when the fuel pump pr primes I want to make sure everything looks good back here if you remember I did disconnect all the hoses oops I disconnected all the hoses the tank was dropped entirely so all of this has been touched so I want to make sure when the fuel pump primes that I'm not seeing any leaks from under there which is where the hose connects from the spout so I want to make sure that all looks good and then what we're going to do is come up here 
I had the fuel rail off, I had the fuel injectors out, everything out. So again, when the fuel pump primes, which is when you turn the key, the fuel pump will prime. Uh, it'll, it'll obviously it's priming, so fuel will be coming. Uh, a little bit of fuel will be coming to start up. And I just want to grab a light and make sure everything with the injectors down there looks good. We're not leaking anywhere. Then we'll try and start it. I'm going to have Quinn come out here and try and start it. She'll start it. And I'm just going to keep an eye on everything and make sure everything looks good. And fingers crossed we don't have any fuel leaks anywhere. Because <laughs> oh, I don't want to deal with that. Literally, I know I do this prematurely, but I just cleaned everything up too. So... I am ready to get this car back on the ground. So ready for it. All right, boys, moment of truth here. We got the missus is in the car. She is going to be the one that uh, turns on the car for me. All right, so just turn the key to the on position. Okay, I don't need to push the brakes or anything? Nope. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Always good to get a check under the car. Everything looks good. All right, boys, here we go. I'm gonna have her crank it a few times and it could start. I'm guessing the oil or the fuel pressure is going to be low. So let's see, I'm gonna, I'll put you right here. I'm guessing the fuel pressure is gonna be low. So I'm assuming it might take a few cranks to start over. Um, yeah, let's give this a shot. Okay, go ahead and uh, and try and start it, babe. Okay, so clutch on and start clutching. Yep. Hold it or not? Yeah, you're going to have to hold it. My first time hearing that exhaust. Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, it seems good. I had no leaks from the injectors. Uh, the fuel pump area looks clean. Everything looks dry. There's no drips coming from beneath the car. I think we may be good for a drive. I just really don't want to jack it back up, so I'll probably stop it and start it a few times just to make sure everything's good because getting this thing jacked up is a huge pain in the butt, but I think we may be good for a drive. Gosh, I'm so stoked with this. boys it's time for the maiden voyage Give her some beans, she, see how she does. Can't see anything. Stop. 
stock S2000. <laughs> Well, I mean, it runs, <laughs> it works, it goes. Oh, the giant freaking bee. I mean, everything feels all right. There were a few little hiccups when I first started driving it, but I think I think it worked itself out. I don't know, I mean, I, ha I did do um, cat or high flow cat, new exhaust, uh, new injectors, clean the fuel lines. I mean, I'm guessing it, the fuel system from what I read will, is a self-purging fuel system, so any air in the system will automatically um, kind of work itself out. And that could be a stupid comment, but I, I believe that'll be fine. Um, so I mean, for now, I think I'm just gonna try and get a few miles on it and see how it goes. It really needs an alignment. And since I should hopefully technically be done with the subframe be done with the suspension height i think i may go get it aligned um, but i'm just going to try and put some miles on it and see how it, see how it runs i mean i think that's the only thing i really can do from this point on <sighs> this has been a long one guys if you're new to the channel smash that subscribe i got so much going on and the, i really i appreciate you guys subscribing i appreciate the support you've been giving me i got a lot coming with the e36 a ton, a ton coming with the E92, and a ton coming with the S2000. I have to be the smallest channel with the most projects. <laughs> like this is, <laughs> smash that subscribe guys. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.